Welcome to the Select Board Board of Health Sewer Commissioners meeting of November 15th, 2023, here at 5 p.m. in the main meeting room of 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield, Mass. This meeting will be held in a hybrid fashion with the opportunity for both in-person attendance and remote participation. Please note that while an option for remote attendance and or participation is being provided as a courtesy to the public, the meeting hearing will not be suspended or terminated if technological problems interrupt the virtual broadcast unless otherwise required by law. Members of the public with particular interest in any specific item on this agenda should have should make plans for in-person versus the virtual attendance accordingly. The meeting will be held in the main meeting room here at the Deerfield Municipal Offices. In accordance with Mass General Law, Chapter 30A, anyone intending to record the meeting must identify themselves to the clerk of our board and provide their name and address for that record. Thank you. So I'm calling the meeting to order at 5.01 uh, p.m. And I, pursuant to general laws, chapter 30A, section 21A3, and subject to the chair's declaration and roll call, the select board will meet in executive session to discuss strategy with respect to potential litigation if in an open meeting may be detrimental to the effect of the litigation position of the town. Second. And I so declare. All those in favor? Tim Hill, G. I. Trevor McDaniel, I. Carolyn S. I. Okay. And then we have the other one as well. You have the one right below it. You got to. Oh, read. okay. Yeah, Pursuant to General Laws 30A, Section 21A6, and subject to ch Chair's declaration and roll call vote, Select Board will meet in executive session to consider purchase, exchange, lease, or value of real estate property if the Chair declares that the open meeting may be detrimental effect on the negotiation position of the public body. And I so declare. Second. All those in favor? Tim Hill, GI. Well, and just friendly amendment, we'll be inviting Lisa Mead, town attorney, Casey Warren, town administrator, and um, Chris Nolan, uh, assistant town administrator, and Kevin Scarborough, our DPW chief. Okay. Second, Trevor McDaniel. All those in favor? Tim Hill, GI. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome back to um, the November 15th, 2023 meeting at of the Select Board, Board of Health, Sewer Commissioners in the main meeting room. Um, we have um, public comment. Is there anyone that wants to talk, give public comment? Oh, Denise Chris, is here. Oh, Denise, hi. Hi, yeah, um, as a matter of fact, I know this is, whoops, I've got to it make is this. Public comment. Yeah, we got you. Yes, sorry. Um, Carolyn, I just wanted to let you know this is very you know last what? minute, yeah, but we sure. just had Denise, an email I'm from sorry. Christine Midori from. You were breaking up, Denise. I didn't hear you. I'm sorry. You're good. You can go ahead. Let me move. I'm sorry. No, it's on our end. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Oh, geez. Okay. So, Carolyn, we just got a. Um, uh, an email from Christine Midori today, and Lily sent that to you, and Chris Nolan, and she wants us, she wants our support for a letter that she's sending to Pete Buttigieg, but I know you guys have to vote on it, so Chris, if Chris can bring it up on his laptop, then you can see what I'm talking about. Um, it would be, hopefully, to get a little bit more money, some more support for um, the town of Deerfield, for our senior housing and transportation. Um, what is this? Okay. Uh, I know it's it's very last minute. If Chris can bring it up on his laptop, he could read that to you guys and you can vote on it because I know you need to vote on it. What is okay. It? Um, Sorry. No, that's, this is a, Chris Medora is, um, Christine Medora is the- um, Mass, Mass Housing Partnership. Partnership. We got we got that neighborhood grant, that little small neighborhood grant for the senior housing. Okay. And so um, this is she's doing she's doing the RFP for us. She's doing a lot of extra stuff for us. Okay. They're not in the grant. Yeah. And this is one of the things she's applying for money for us. Okay. She's all right. She's right. one of those. Um, she's committed to us. That's awesome. I I mean it's unbelievable. Yes, she's a mass. Wonderful. She's a 
state employees. That's awesome. Hey, Carolyn, I can read an excerpt. It says additional resources of between 75,000 to 150,000 from the, the TCP program, which is Thriving Communities Regional Pilots Program, will right. enable the town of Deerfield to further identify advanced housing economic opportunities in the areas, blah, blah, blah. Right. Um, I will make a motion to send that letter of support. Excellent. Okay. So, so Chris has that. Lily sent that to you. So you need to sign it and put it on letterhead before Wednesday. She needs that. Next Wednesday, right? Next Wednesday. Uh, yeah, before the 22nd. Oh, there okay. it is. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Great. Uh, yes. So we'll get this, Chris to do it. Excellent. Is, okay. I'll Thank you so much, guys. I'll second. Uh, is there any okay. further discussion? Nope. Nope. Anytime we get extra money is wonderful. Yep. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Thank you all for okay. working with well, Denise, and Thank please you. let Lily know, um, because I I turned down her phone call because we were in executive session. Yeah, I know, I know. She's she's on a she's on another meeting, so that's why I had to pop in. <laughs> okay. okay. Anyway, okay. Thanks. Thank I'm going. Much. Bye. Great. Um, that was great public comment. Chris um, Harris, did you have public comment? Welcome. Yeah, the only the only uh, um, short announcement I have is that we're working hard to finalize all the plans for Sunday, December tenth, which is essentially the historic house uh, churches open house uh, program, and so you'll start seeing announcements on that um, starting probably uh, this Sunday. Um, might even have handouts as early as Saturday. And uh, I think there's a lot of enthusiasm amongst the churches, the active churches in South Deerfield, but we'll also have literature on some of the former churches that are closed or that were demolished during the history of Deerfield. It's, it's, it's all churches open house, you said, on the 10th of December? Yeah. Okay, yeah. great. So yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll be our... generating posters and flyers great. and social media, et cetera. Yeah. Um, and we'll reach out to the recorder to make sure that everybody knows in surrounding communities. Um, but that's um, going to turn into kind of a major 350th event. Nice. And it started with a concept, but it's it's actually grown. That's great. Uh, we're really excited about that because um, I think um, a lot of people are interested. Sure. And it will be really yeah. great. That's wonderful. Um, so thank you, thank Chris. You, Chris. Really appreciate that. Good to see you. Yes, it is good to see you. Um, so we have no appearances. Uh, select board announcements. Um, I participated in our rural schools aid uh, roundtable last Monday. Um, basically, it was in support of trying to figure out how we're going to get more, get the rural aid bill in, uh, money increased. It jumped from seven million to fifteen million. Um, but we need it closer to 60 million. And that was as of a couple of years ago. So it's probably like 80 million now. So the idea was um, basically everybody come together and support Natalie and Joe's bill that is going through the legislature and um, how we're going to make sure that it gets up to a reasonable, consistent amount. Darius was there. Right. Um, so it was really good. Um, then... I just wanted to say that I did uh, testify, yes, uh, the launch of Joe and Natalie's um, $250 million emergency relief fund. Basically, I just said that uh, we're having more of these gap storms that they don't, mm -hmm. the magnitude of them was unbelievable in the damage, the devastation, the costs, but they don't qualify for federal aid. And then sometimes you get supplemental bill support, sometimes you don't. Yep. And, you know, it, it's really devastating to us as t municipalities. So uh, that went really well. And um, I right now, the good news is um, in the supplemental bill on the House side, there's $12 million for the July storms. And then um, in the Senate side, it's $15 million. So it has to go to conf conference and hopefully it's going to be signed by the governor and agreed upon and we will get money shortly. Um, so that's good. Question is how much? Don't know at this point. Um, is there anything? Oh, and again, just an update on River Road. 
you know, we're trying to figure out if it's settling, if it's slumping, or is it really failing? It feels like it's settling. Uh, it hasn't done much in the last week or two. Um, we'll have some rain this weekend and some storms maybe on Tuesday. So we'll see what happens in the next week or two. We're monitoring that. Um, is there anything else either one of you wants to announce? I'll talk about it a little bit later, just uh, toward the um, possible uh, property in Sun on, on Plumtree Road yesterday and um, had a good meeting about that. But I know that's later on in the discussion, so I can touch base and give you an update at that time. Oh, Chris. That letter. Oh, fantastic. Chris is, Denise will be happy to know right. that it's already taken care of. So I just wanted to um, take a minute to thank Eric Meals and the deep, uh, the sewer department crew for their work this week taking apart the solar tracker array, which was donated by New Pro and its parent company. And a uh, new location is planned for the uh, old South Deerfield wastewater treatment facility in the spring or summer, which will help reduce the electrical bills down there. Um, also wanted to say that uh, several people in town, um, including Ben Clark from Clarkdale, and um, the Frontier Regional stamp Stomping Out Hunger crew are going to be walking in the Food Bank of Western Massachusetts uh, trek uh, on November 20th, 21st to raise money for the Food Bank of Western Massachusetts. And um, hopefully my feet will be uh, back to normal a week later. Um, <laughs> and also wanted to say that Eagle Brook um, has started to renovate uh, the Fellowship Hall portion of the 1821 building. Um, so we're very excited about that, and uh, we'll have a temporary home for the library when the, when they're done. Um, so things are moving ahead. Very Great. excited. Well, thanks for thanks for doing the walk. You know, the big the big <laughs> fundraiser each year. And I, that's a that's a haul. I, I I cannot do that kind of walk, but no, it is. I'm glad you're doing that to help raise money. I think it's for, wonderful. For um, that reminds me uh, when you mentioned Eaglebrook, um, the brick grant. We do need to vote. Um, to send a letter of uh, statement of interest for the brick application on uh, November 20th. Mm -hmm. um, I spoke to um, Shelly, who is in charge of MEMA, and she said that even though we send the letter of interest right now that just is identifying, it puts it on the radar. Yeah. So we can have it expanded in the next month um, because your draft of your cost benefit analysis is due on um, December 18th, and then the final application is due on January 8th. But we have still time to include the railroad, mm -hmm. and we're trying to work with the railroad and get that expanded. Um, so we're going to vote because the letter has to go mm -hmm. in for next week. Right. But the intention is to expand it to include the you know water yeah. coming at the trestles because sure. the trestles this this what what we're doing is making sure that there's no issues coming down pine nook so everything is obviously giantly expanded right but then the water pools at the trestles still right that, there's nothing we can do because it's not our property right and so what happens is it's going to be increased volume coming down it's going to go across the trestles just like it did before, you know, I mean, under the trestles yeah. to our other side of the road. And then it's going to wash out our other side of the road. Right. So what we have to do is come up with a solution that involves the railroad. Yeah. And so we are attempting that. Okay. And so right now the grant is almost $4 million. And if we do a, a solution for the railroad, um, it will probably be, eight to 10, just, I mean, not that you care. I mean, we're, this is for a grant, but yeah. that's the kind of ballpark we're talking right. about. So I will make the motion to support the letter of statement of interest to submit for the BRIC grant. I'll second okay. the motion. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Okay, thank you. Thank you. And who who is going to draft this, or has it already been drafted? And... It's it's already been drafted. Chris has the, um, uh, you know, it's we just have to fill out 
our information, some more of our information, but it's already mm -hmm. been prepared. It's okay. already ready to go. And um, see if there was anything that we need to share if it was lost. No, okay, no. I, I talked to Shelly. She's willing to do it online for us too. So I but I wanted to clarify with her that we 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 could expand it and we can expand it. Okay. It's just long as soon as we get the railroad online. Uh, you know, who knows? Yep. Anyway, Board of Health. Um, I see that, oh, Valerie's here, but um, I just want to make sure everyone knows that the mosquitoes are pretty much dead because we've had cold weather, yep. but we have ticks that are trying to barrel down for the winter, so we also have please a nice, do ticks, uh, ticks, uh, ticks. Update from, from Valerie on yes. the Board of Health kind of um, inspection. There is no, I, what I wanted to do okay. is Chris, in Chris's report, he had mentioned that the, he had reviewed um, the um, candidates for the Board of Health agent, mm -hmm. and there was only one qualified, uh, which is Valerie. And um, I have to say, she's willing to work weekends. She's incredibly, she has all of her certifications. She's really um, has a lot of experience. Mm -hmm. So. I would recommend if it's uh, okay with the board that we uh, have Chris make an offer of uh, employment. Yes, I would uh, second that. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn S. I. So Chris, um, you, can, you can talk to Valerie tomorrow. Sure, happy uh, to. And I guess that's, yeah. Valerie, is there anything you wanna say? I guess she was. No, she's here. Oh, no, I, I'm here um, or I'm there, but I'm really here. <laughs> um, I just want to let you know that um, Pat Kroll and I, we worked the uh, tobacco violation letter and corrected. There was some typos on it, correct, made some corrections, added a time frame when they could pay and then um, hand delivered it. I hand delivered it this afternoon to the, th the three violators. Thank and you. I also got a signature page that says that they've received it. And right. out of out of the three, two of them knew they had violations. The third place um, didn't know anything about it, but now we, now they know. Okay. Um, did you just let them know that we are going to review the... I did. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Right. I, 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 did let, I did speak to them about about that and um the first place i stopped at um was in favor of it okay right so what, we, we, there's words missing after review the uh, are we talking about the suspension portion of this or what the were fines. we reviewing the fine well valerie you're gonna for our meeting on the end of the month you're 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 gonna um go over what we, you're suggesting that we adopt. Okay. Can you right. Just... So, so with with the uh, state regulations, you can't vary the fine, the amount of the fine, but you can vary the tolling time, right. um, the suspension time. You 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 can change the suspension time if you wish. Okay. Um. Could you? So, is there anybody that has any questions of her on that, or what? I think we'd like to if see we had that... something to review. You know, just just even a bullet bullet point on what what the fines would be, what the what the suspension options are, and stuff that okay. we could then vote on on the twenty eighth would be great. Yeah, I actually sent that to uh, Casey, um, okay. two like uh, two weeks ago I, in I, in I, word format. Sorry. I sent it to her in word format so she could make changes. I don't know if she's done that yet, but I can send it to the board as well. I think I do remember seeing that stuff, uh, but I, I wasn't sure. I know maybe it was a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, a couple of meetings ago. Valerie, just um, hopefully yeah, you'll are. accept yeah. our job offer, and um, so that you, and then you would make a recommendation to us based okay. on on what you feel uh, you want to enforce, or okay. you feel okay. would be reasonable to enforce, given that you've had some experience already with the violations. Yep. Okay. Okay. So well, I'll be back in two weeks and. I'll sounds have something sweet. for you. That sounds great. Thanks, Valerie. Thank you. Thank okay. you, Valerie. Thank um, you. I really appreciate everything you're doing. Is there anything else that you need me for? No. Nope. 
No, no. have a great night. Have a great okay. night. Thank you, Valerie. Happy Thanksgiving. Thank you. Thanksgiving, yeah. Valerie. Thanks. Bye bye. Bye. Um, we have minutes of January 21st, 2020. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of January 21st, 2020. Um, I have to say it was pre brings back memories. Flashback to naive um pre-COVID. Pre -COVID. I'll second it. Oh yeah. All, all those in favor. Tim Hilch abstain. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Anybody want to hear I was still in college during this? <laughs> <laughs> um uh, we have Thank minutes you. of um, uh, uh, November 8th. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of November 8th, 2023. I just had um, a one correction or two corrections on the um, second page. It's my granddaughter and not my daughter. Uh, uh, oh, yeah. Okay. That's all. Yeah, so I'd make a motion to approve the minutes of uh, November 8th, 2023 with the, uh, uh, the correction of daughter to granddaughter and we're referenced by chairman second all those in favor tim hilchi aye trevor mcdaniel abstain carolyn nessa aye um it's just that uh we want to make sure that we get victoria doesn't mind getting references youth but <laughs> we were appointing a youth to our right. committee she's pretty youthful yeah <laughs> well, compared to some of us, yes. <laughs> All right. Um, I'll make one one day liquor licenses. I'll for... make a motion to approve a one day liquor license for Yankee Candle Village. This will be for, um, let's see, no, uh, it is for November sixteenth from five to seven p.m. at the Yankee Candle Village. This is for their tree lighting event. So anybody would like to to um, partake in that should be a fun fun event. No, I'll second the motion. Any further discussion? Nope. I see all the insurances are in play. Yep. We're good to go. Yep. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. And that one's actually tomorrow. It snuck up pretty I fast. Know. Oh, yes, it did. And then uh, another um, one-day um, liquor license for Yankee Candle Village again for December 7th from 5 to 8 p.m. This is an after-hour shopping event. Uh, I'll second it. Okay. Is there any further discussion? Nope. Hearing none, all those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Great. All right. Um, next uh, item on the agenda is special legislation bond anticipation note. I don't think we have anything on that at the moment. Do we have anything on that? Not that I know of. I think that may have been a placeholder from last time. Okay. It is. I just want to, it does say current cash flow situation. I just want to say again that we are in the supplemental bill. I don't know when the governor will sign it, but hopefully before Thanksgiving. And um, and we're waiting for, for the special the amount, legislation yeah. from the state, uh, from the governor's office. And I know, want to thank Natalie and Joe for shepherding that through as yeah. fast as they could. And um so hopefully we'll have that shortly to be able to put through to the bond. Um, otherwise, we will not be um, able to, you know, roll that three million into the bond. So that's yep. going to um, be tough with the cash flow. So hopefully that'll all work in time. Everybody's I fingers are crossed. I also want to thank them for sponsoring the bill for to give MEMA actual money to give to people when we have an emergency. Mm -hmm. It's nice to have Mima come out and tell us that we're experiencing an emergency, but it would be nice to have some money available to them to then address the emergency rather yeah. than having to wait six, 10, eight months, whatever. Yeah. Um, I have to say that one of the things that was most shocking to me was in 2005, when we first, my first event was um, you called Mima. And of course, back then they really didn't come very either. But it was so shocking to find out that they they have no resources, none. No. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. this is, I think, this is a really um, needful thing. Like I said, I, I testified for it, and we'll sort of write a letter of support and get people out. And I also um, want to just recognize that what's so special about Senator Comerford and and Nat Representative Blay is that. They they propose solutions to problems. They don't just identify them, and mm -hmm. and that's the the sign of a good leadership good team. And uh, we're very lucky to have them 
you know, batting for us. Absolutely. Um, you know what you missed here? The old Deerfield sewer pipe project. Yep. I can give you a quick update on sure. that. We had voted this already. Um, we had already moved on on this, but um, there it has not been signed. I check with DPC. They've been waiting for the signature from us on the contract. And I know that Casey was going back and forth on the um, whose contract we're going to be using. I talked to Dave today. And uh, Chris is sending along um, our contract and his contract. And I think it's just Dave said if we can just give them the Word document, he could then merge his proposal. Because when he sends a contract, it's his proposal merged onto the terms that we've approved. So he's just going to get all that figured out and um, we can get a signature done in the next, I don't know. So we can sign that off. We we need to get that done. I know. We got to okay. get it going. So that's one of those things that's been hung up between figuring out whose contract we're using and and, and the, all right you know the people have been out so we're just once we should have that done pretty quick so okay you feel okay with that chris yeah that's fine with me thank okay. you thank you um south deerfield wastewater treatment plant old old deerfield wastewater treatment plant operational costs we we agreed we're going to just send just that wait on that yeah yeah yep okay um no i didn't think we were going to wait on that i thought we were just going to send send up um that on oh to on to the to Western Western Samson. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Just a clean yep. copy right. of the operational costs. Yep. Okay. Current Apple. operational costs. Yep. So you understand that too? No problem. Right. Okay. Yeah, that's not a problem at all. Um Tilton Library contract amendment for review and approval. Um I didn't I haven't I didn't see anything. Do we well, know anything this about is, this? This is in cases. Yeah, it's in the hands of the town administrator. I have not been involved in that. We don't okay. know what's happening with it. Okay. Because I, I hadn't seen anything. Nope. All right. As long as I'm just not out of the loop. No. Okay. No, yeah. I'm, I'm on the Tilton Building Committee, and, and the understanding of the uh, project manager is that his part of completing the contract has been completed for a period of time, and it's just waiting for a final version to be brought to the select board for ratification. So, um I know that we have checks waiting, the three checks, I think, waiting to go to them. And we just haven't been able to do that until the contract's signed. Okay. So. All right. Well, we'll trace, yep. try and to track that down for the 29th then. Mm -hmm. um, can you put that on the agenda for the 29th? Sure. Um, and if there's a meeting, like somebody needs one sooner than that, I'm always, I'm off. It. I if, mean, yeah. We can come in. We, we can, we can if have. If you need us, just let us know. We yeah. Sure. Yeah. And Absolutely. it would be nice to, you know, just do some research about if, in fact, what the project manager is telling us is correct. Yep. What was the purpose and the cause of the delay? Yeah. Yep. For yeah. Sure. I, I don't know. Okay. Um, social justice indicators. Chris, I know you've been working on that. Do you have any updates? I have. I actually included a couple of pages in the yeah. board's packet about that. Thank um, you for that work. Let Thank me you. Navigate to that myself so I can read some of the highlights from it. Um, but essentially, what I found through my research was that I didn't know a lot of this. I know the general premise of the state's environmental justice maps and community designations. Um, but I found that the uh, income designations for those are calculated not through the census directly, but through the American Community Survey. Uh, the American Community Survey is something that's done through sampling on a constant basis rather than the every 10-year census. Oh, okay. uh, and it's unclear when the newest update to the American Community Survey is going to be out. However, uh, the most recent data is also from 2020, much like the census. But mm -hmm. that does tell me I don't know when exactly we can expect more updates to come on that, but uh, it is hopeful that it's been a couple of years because that might mean that we can expect something newer soon. And mm -hmm. based on that, we can kind of see what trends are happening with our demographics. And there's a chance, particularly with Deerfield Census Block Group 4, um, which currently is at about 67% of the statewide median household income. Um, if that fluctuates within a few points, that could drop to 65 or lower, which would make that a designated environmental justice block group, which mm -hmm. potentially would open up more funding possibilities, but nothing is guaranteed. Okay. Right. Thank Thanks you, Chris. Yeah. I, Thanks, Chris. I appreciate it. I, sure. I, I really appreciate you drilling down on that. Yeah. We have to keep on top of that. Um, because that's clearly going to be 
going forward, that's going to be part of the, every application that we do a grant. Um, Leary Lot update. So Leary Lot, um, I don't think I've given the board an update since it was approved by the planning board at site plan review. So that was last Monday, November 6th, uh, went very well. Mm -hmm. Planning board very much liked what they saw. Um, yeah. I think one or more of you were in attendance and it was great to see. I unfortunately wasn't able to stay the whole time because grad school, yeah. um, <laughs> but it went very well. Um, I've been in regular communication with Jeff in the time since. Uh, and what Jeff and his team at Berkshire Design are doing right now is they're finalizing some of the design elements um, so that it is ready to go for a bid package within the next few weeks. And after that happens, then we'll pretty much be ready to go on the putting it out to bid front. The one thing I wanted to just, and it may have gotten, it may get lost. Maybe it's not lost and it's been captured, but I was wondering if, um, in the areas under the picnic table, um, we could have a bid alternate or an alternate for the granite, like, I don't know if they're eight by 12, um, instead of doing brick, doing uh, granite slat, like little pavers there. I can ask about that. Because I think we were planning that on the common for like the landing areas and around the, the um, there's a little sitting area or a space that you could sit by the fountain. And I was just thinking of if we could tie it in, if it's ridiculously too much money, then we wouldn't bother. but. We just, I thought if we could have that one alternate for those little areas that we could, you know, just so when it, when we do the common, everything kind of ties in and looks the same, same materials. Sure. Just as an alternate for those little paver spots instead of brick using that, that more of a eight by 12 granite slab, a little bigger, not so much, you know, getting your foot caught in the crack kind of thing. I just, I want, like that idea. I do want to announce that um, on December 13th at five o'clock, before our select board meeting, we're going to have a Leary, um, Leary lot update on um, some of the green infrastructure that we are putting in. Okay. And just hopefully have calculations about how much stormwater capacity we have. Um, and it's the start of our push to be able to absorb um, you know, water from Bloody Brook. And you said that's the 13th at what time? Five o'clock. Oh, okay. It's part of our MVP preparedness grant program. Oh, okay. MVP meeting. Um, yeah, at five o'clock, yeah. it's going to be an update on the Leary lot. Okay, great. So that's before the select board meeting, right? Yeah, so it'll yeah. be the before the select board oh. meeting. Just uh, since we're talking about events, I believe that um, I know that uh, the women, um, women's group, I think, um, I think the deer are going to be going on the common this weekend. Oh, this weekend. Yeah, I think. Well, or it's right before Thanksgiving. Maybe it's not this weekend, but it's got to be pretty close. So I yeah. know maybe it's the day before or something. But I, I'll try to get update and we'll put something on the website. But I know that um, Denise Schwartz had kind of said, "Hey, is it okay if we put the deer on again?" And I think Kevin was okay with it. And yeah, so I think they're planning to do that. And usually they do a little lighting thing and stuff. So. If we can get some information, I'll try to get it out on social media so people know what's yep. going on. Uh, yeah, anything that's really happy, that's yeah, what we cheerful. want to do. Cheerful. Was good. Um, I see that Julie's on listening to the meeting. I just, uh, Julie, we are getting money in a supplemental bill, um, just to let you know. We just don't know how much. Hope. It's $12 million in the House bill version, and there's um, $15 million in the Senate version. We just don't know how much is going to end up in deer, you know, allocated Deerfield at this point. But we are in the supplemental budget, so that's a really good thing. Mm -hmm. so that is good news. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. we've been chasing it down. Lemonster's <laughs> lucky because they know they're getting at least two million. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, we we don't city. know what what's <laughs> going on with us. But uh, Natalie and Joe have, are committed to us, so that's great. Um, Okay, EV chargers, Chris. So um, yeah, updates on these. So the electricity costs and the billing and reimbursement, I haven't successfully been able to get in touch with ChargePoint yet. Um, however, the recent allocations for the Schedule Z have been adjusted. Um, I don't know if that's gonna change much. We haven't really had a problem with the EV chargers since the demand charge was dropped back in July. Um, but it is something I'm closely monitoring to make sure that we're not spending, well, at this point, any money on 
running the electricity for those. Um, I am still going to try and keep getting in touch with ChargePoint to see how we would go about lowering that rate because right now I know people are being turned away by our EV charger that's currently at the Leary lot because of the high rate that it charges. Okay. Thank you. Sure. I appreciate you trying to keep on top of that. Um, we have a letter of support um, for the uh, Senior Center Board of Oversight um, interests uh, in the 23 Plum Tree Road. Yes. And I want to say that, um, well, I'll make that motion yeah. that we support the letter of support because we absolutely support um, everything moving forward on that it's just a deerfield uh we can't take on anything because we got to <laughs> drill down on these roads and we don't have a dime so i'll, I'll, I'll second it since trevor's on the boom yeah yeah yes yeah so uh oh well vote first i guess no 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 we want to hear first okay. yeah so um so yesterday at uh was it yesterday i think it was yesterday 12 30 um we all met the, maybe 20, 25 of us went over to the uh, to the building. Um, we got the van going from the senior center. A bunch of seniors came and um, uh, selectmen from, um, let's see, I'm trying to think who, oh, uh, Joyce was there from Waitley uh, Select Board and um, Brian, um, Brian was there, the town administrator from Waitley and uh, Sunderland's town administrator, Jeff was there and um, a whole bunch of people came. And we we toured the building. I looked at it from the outside. It's in very good shape. It was built in the 90s. There's some little rot here and there, but easy stuff to maintain. The roof looks great. Um, uh, this got sprinkler systems. It's uh, well manicured. It's got a whole other huge parking space on the left. So you have parking in the front of the building. The building has been done in three phases. So there was the first phase, then they added on a second phase, which gave them a courtyard. And then third phase was another wing of offices towards the back and west side, southwest side. Um, so it's in really nice shape. There's like every office has a window. It's trust frame. So there is space to kind of take out interior walls and make bigger spaces because there's not a lot of, there's not much for large opening there. So they will have to take some of those wall partition walls out, but there's plenty of offices. I think Sunderland plans to like have um, quite a bit of their town work there, like uh, select board meetings, different kind of things. There's plenty of room for Sunderland's business and the senior center. Um, so they're they're the working on um, seeing how fast they could get approval from the town because they got to pull a special town meeting together, get approval from the town for the purchase. So. That's the hard part because I'm sure there's other interested parties. Um, so we're really hoping that it all works out in the town's favor that they could purchase it and then we would we would pay rent. Um, there'd be some work to do like a ancillary system for the kitchen if they were going to expand the kitchen and then have to blow out some some walls for a bigger dining area for people to dine in. But um, the property is wonderful. The space is wonderful. The building's in really good shape. It's got fairly two two new AC units that you go downstairs there's tons of storage everything's dry like it's well built um well maintained so it, it's a good investment for Sunderland and I think it would be a great space for the seniors if we could get there on time you know it's just a matter of municipalities move slow but the realtor was was nice to talk to and just you know was being up front said other people were looking at it so it's just a matter of how how quick we could do it um but very nice, very nice building. Um, so all those in support of sending a letter of support. Mm. Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn S. I. I think it's also clearly wonderful. Mm -hmm. And I I'm just sorry that we at this point we yeah are just maxed out. And and we don't have the land or you know, uh, so uh it's priced below replacement costs. So it's probably gonna move. It's gonna be hard to find comps you know when you're trying to I don't, there's no buildings around like it um so it's really hard to kind of factor that in when they do you know a, appraisal and that kind of thing but um it's it's just a really good building to build something like that you're four or five million bucks i mean at least, or, oh, at no. least. And i mean it's just a lot and it's just a even great our, deal you know and square footage there's certainly work that needs to be done to make it usable but um 
not major. So yeah, yeah, very excited. Well, and in, in that sparked a brain cell. Um, speaking of which, since this is a a hope and not a certainty, um, I do think we need to uh, you know be looking at the uh, the money that uh, Senator Comerford um, yeah. uh, approved for us to to work on the 1821 building and um, senior services. And we are, are we now moving ahead with Structures North? Um, have they actually, do you know if they've actually done any work or? I'm not sure if they've done any work. My understanding is that we are moving ahead. Okay, because I mean, I, 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 we've got to fix that. Um, and the money has been sitting there and we need to spend it. And it seems like a, a logical thing to spend it on. And so anyway, um, it would be nice to get an update on Structures North for the next next meeting to see where they are. Yep. Can you put that on the agenda, Chris? Sure. So we can look at that. Um, uh, okay. Um, next item on the agenda, we have to really worry about, oh, well, um, Town Office Space Reorganization. We have um, Chris Dunn coming. Mm -hmm. pretty soon so um i i'm just thinking offhand we really need to reorganize really quickly so we have a space for him so you have some proposals. he's done quite a bit of work, work. He's just yeah done a lot of work on this i know yeah. so could you update us sure in the words of bob ross i made eight happy little drawings <laughs> yes. um that you can find towards the back of the packet um the current the first one is the current conditions and it goes proposals one through seven, and they're just rough sketches of the building as it currently stands with the office space divided accordingly. Um, it's not entirely accurate or at the scale. It's just my chicken scratch. Um, however, I put all of these together based on comments that have been received, some by members of the select board, some by the town administrator, and others by staff within the building um, who know that there is reorganization coming to accommodate this new person. Um, so I'm not sure if the board wanted to weigh in on any of these first before I kind of give where their current direction seems to be. Um, well, I think you've, uh, talked Oops. to us individually. So, um, six or seven are good to me. Um, Trevor, why don't you start off with what you, um, are feeling like? Well, one, one thought would be to, I mean, I, I feel like, um, it might be nice to have um Chris and Chris kind of together in a space and um and I think because you know working on different projects and the town administrators working on multi like different stuff I mean all, obviously town administrators addressing all that stuff but has a lot more things going on um HR wise and personnel wise and stuff that um, I think it's always important for for the town administrator to have their own office and own space. So I think if you were going to team up uh, two people because we're limited in space, it would be you know the planner and the assistant town administrator will be working on a lot of different things together. So it, it seems like um, you know picking a space that would would work, and I think that office in there on the north side of the building is larger to fit two people and if, and and the nurse's office is i think so i'm looking at seven really the nurse's office would be large enough to you know to uh have the town administrator and then still have a kind of a separation room so they could have an office and still have a public meeting space out front for the town administrator whereas this place this place uh the back room on the north side is large enough to split two people and have a space to work for the planner and and town and an assistant town administrator, and then still have, you know, the the front office town administrator, you know, reception here at this front office where Chris is sitting now. So maybe um, Pat moves in there. Um, Chris and Chris are in the back offices. Casey has the southern exposure um has the main office in the back and then the front area for us when we come in to talk you can put a table in there in the front area um she could meet with people privately in her space with the door shut and not and then the nurse could be um where pat is right now knowing that if 
the nurse eventually could could be in that Sunderland space. There's so many wonderful oh, spaces. Oh, I mean, I know it's a Deerfield thing, but she's with seniors. Oh no, I mean, so, the whole, her intention is to be with, with seniors. seniors. So wherever the senior center is, and she, I, she this is just she'd have a home base here. So my I, my feeling right off, let's just say. We're agreeing that the nurse's office should be where yeah. Pat's office yep. is. Reallocated to a better use. Yes, yep. because number one, um, Cindy Majewski is wonderful, but she's part-time. Mm -hmm. And we want her with the seniors. Right. And then she's mostly doing vulnerable mm -hmm. population visits and stuff like that. And my only concern is like, okay, so let's figure out where the vaccine refrigerator goes, that kind of stuff. Oh, there's plenty if of there's there. room in there, great. Yeah. And if not, like there's a space around that back office to um there's plenty of room i mean the, our, the, the vaccine refrigerator is small okay um okay so anybody you, else's thoughts well was I, was, my two I was gonna have tim then talk but we agree so we're agreeing right now cindy's moving into pat's office okay yeah. okay so tim your thoughts on what you want to see no i'm i i agree with trevor um that six and seven are sort of along the lines that that I was looking at, and um, and I do agree that um, you know it would. I think the the difference between six and seven, and this is a question that Chris can address, is um, the proximity of the administrative assistant to the town administrator in um, in six. Is is that a benefit to the town administrator and or or in seven case, is it okay to have her, you know, set across the hall from the town administrator? Mm -hmm. Those are the only two things that I thought about it. But this is six is more of a uh or seven is more of yeah, six and six is probably more what I was thinking about and I hadn't even mm. put in my mind, oh yeah, you could, you know, there is an advantage to having um, the town administrator across the hall, near near to the accountant, near yeah. to the other parts of the operation. Yep. And um, you know, so I'd be guided by Chris on on this. Yeah. Uh, you know, but I think those two proposals are right. definitely have some some uh, advantages that we should pursue immediately. We should make a decision tonight, is what I think. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, yeah. I don't I think do. we need to rethink this. You know, for four or five weeks. No. Um, what are your thoughts, Chris? As you laid this out, you did six different options, what, what's seven different square, options. What's the square footage of that office versus this office? I unfortunately don't know. Um, I, I haven't spent enough time in Cindy's current office. I, I do know that at one point, I believe it was two offices yeah. long ago. Yeah. Um, however, I'm not sure how it compares size wise. Um, I think six or seven are both suitable. Um, yeah. I think. They kind of got a little bit more feasible as I went through, and I, I tried to do it in sequential order the best I could. Like proposal one was when we first started talking about turning the current FCAT slash server room into right. an office, um, but it's not necessarily desirable space. No, no, no. Um, we didn't want to lose the conference room either, but that is one of the proposals to right. turn that into office space. Um, but I think either six or seven or a modified version of either one um, are perfectly feasible and if something ends up not working out for the best, I mean, we can always yeah. rearrange moving forward. So, and speaking of FCAT, do we have any idea? Uh, is there an alternative plan for them? I mean, I know I've heard discussions that I and I can't remember exactly what they were about FCAT exploring new space or I think they were thinking of moving a lot of stuff there, but some of the servers need to stay in there. And, um, and I'm, my question is, can they go in the closet? Mm -hmm. uh, is there enough room for the move them into the closet and then free up that space? I know it's the area is kind of cold because it has to stay cold right. uh, for the for the servers. So I'm, and and there's no window, so it's not a great. Office, yeah, I, I, but... I guess I'm just trying to understand what is the what is the rationale? FCAT is its own entity, right? I mean, yes. And so, what is the rationale of? it having to occupy space in the Deerfield Town Hall. Mm. Well, it's mostly our servers, though. It was mainly this the servers, right? Yeah. But our servers? Our servers okay. as well. Right. They're all kind of together, I think. Right. It's our, and it's our equipment. They're, they do they have they do have a location 
in, in Sunderland. Sunderland. Right. Yeah. So it's it's an I addition mean, it's, to FCAT. FCAT has a benefit because their equipment needs to be cool as well. Yeah, I think so. So maybe we could get yeah, some info I, from John as yeah, well. I, I don't know if they have a longer term plan where they're going to yeah. consolidate in one space. Or... Well, they were going to upgrade the equipment and then so that I you can handle Sorry to sidetrack the discussion. So oh, let's... here's Jonathan. Jonathan, Jonathan when, you were talking, chair. <laughs> when you were talking about um, moving to Sunderland, that was with equipment upgrade. Is that correct? Or we something? are going to. Yeah, so John Bosher from FCAT, for Those they don't people. know. Um, the man uh, one of the things I wanted that we need to do is we are going to need to upgrade our server, but instead of putting it in there, I would like it to go into Sunderland so everything is centralized in the right. one location. And also because the future of that space is right. unknown right now, the server's in there because of the AC. Right. In there. And and so, when we get the new one, which is going to be in a, a little bit, because I need to talk to Casey about how I'll go about doing that because of the procurement thing. Yeah, but that will be in Sunderland. Board, but I would like to have that in Sunderland because everything is there. So, one, and it, I mean, I, I think it'd be sort of contradict. I don't know if that's the right word, but not the best thing to move that into Sunderland. So, once that's there and you have a new server there, all your equipment's there, do you need any of that space? Probably not, to be honest. I need to just ask Comcast that and Fine. verify that. Right. But ideally, since we're going to go with, I think at, we, at one point we were talking about getting an owl, like do having this thing sort of similar to like what Waitley has for your meetings. Mm -hmm. and because yeah, oh, an it's owl. very yes. expensive to upgrade all this stuff. And there's, right a lot of the stuff and it's easier just to get like what Waitley has with an owl and a little box to switch right. it. And yeah. ideally that would be easier. And then, you know, we just, right. we would just, if there's like a bigger meeting or hearing here that needs to be filmed, I would just send you an operator with a camera, but for right. like a meeting like this, it would be owl and okay. a little so, contraption so to switch it. This should free up by the end of the year sometime. Nor, or well, not, 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 yeah, not, next year I mean, like, is the plan. Okay. The ball's going to get rolling on that. That's okay. one of my projects for Maybe this coming year. And yeah, things got a little. It, the procurement thing was brought to my attention this recently, so that's sort of we'll the whole that thing. Out. Yeah, yeah. So we can get that it, out. there's a whole thing with up because Conway is going to be giving you that high definition channel as well so we need to upgrade the server so it Got can it. work and do that yeah so yeah. okay well that's helpful to know do we uh do we donate the space to fcat is that what the arrangement is or do you pay i'm not sure what the original agreement was i know at one point the station was located over there on Elm. by elm street yeah yeah and the server was in here because of the internet speeds yeah, i yeah. believe and also because i think it was a little bit more secure at yeah. the time yeah yep originally and carolyn told me this originally the intent of fcat was a habit in the high school but yeah. that never happened for whatever yeah. reason yeah huh. then it got moved into sunderland because it was just a better deal. And there were, were some other issues with that space, I guess, on Elm Street. On Elm Street. Well, yep. originally we wanted to have a, you know, really a lot of youth involved, yeah. Yeah, students involved. I, I still think support. that's a great. We're point. still looking at Kevin and I are looking at yeah. doing that. And have he actually has some classes coming up for some of the kids this yeah. December, like an after school type program. Yeah. Ideally, I would like to get a satellite station in there. Right. But that that's more it would be great conversation somebody, I need to have with kids them. Could so. do a, kids could do their own show well, and stuff. I mean, well, like the idea is really to cool. have them have training and yeah. opportunities to training because a lot of the stuff they can yeah. go on and actually get jobs. Yeah, for sure. And, no, and it but great. it's also to spark interest. Yep. Everybody has one of these, but they don't know how to properly film with it. That's you know? right. And yeah. That's yeah. where we can help people. Sure. Sure. And That'd we also great. have more professional tools for people that will actually want to 
go places and, and experiment. So. And a lot of the kids kind of kind of work up through and then come help you and video and help at town meetings and stuff. It's a great win-win. So, yeah, okay, that's I mean, great. We we're just wondering what your thoughts were on that as we're shaking some space. Ideally, I do want to get us out of there. I mean, now that we're yeah. not going to be doing what Casey and I originally, because originally I was going to move everything into the little closet space in yeah. there. But now, since we're not doing that, it's real. It would be nice to just be out of there, out of there and just be entirely in Sunderland and That'd just have what necessary equipment we need to cover the meetings. Perfect. That'd be yeah. great. Yeah. And you can always have space somewhere for that here if you need to store a camera. Right, but we could yeah. stick it in the closet. Absolutely, if yep. need be. Yep. Perfect. And okay. That would also, you know, if and when it occurs, and if we're still in this building for a long period of time, mm -hmm. you know, we could definitely look at reconfiguring you know where the walls are in that space absolutely because, uh you know it's an odd space at the moment yeah you could yeah. open it up yeah yeah for sure thanks okay. jonathan thank you thank you jonathan thank and you we are you're really welcome. supportive of what you're doing and thanks. um we do have money you know allocated from comcast for to well, you, I'm going to be at a check. board meeting. I'm hoping beginning of December. So I, I was sick a lot in October and it just kind of got, I'm going to be discussing a lot of this because I do want to yeah. move forward with some of these projects just because well, it'd be more convenient for you guys and for me. Yeah. Well, I want to do said, what works best yeah, for everybody. 23,000. You had the annual check. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And while we're on that subject that um, you saw the letter that they're Comcast is up for renewal in 2026, so we need to start thinking about: Do we want to use Comcast still? Another opportunity. Uh, there may be some. Uh, I I'm a board member of Mass Access, and I can't speak for them, but I for sure. I know that there is, like, they're trying to move forward with a streaming bill to okay. get money from that. I don't know what's going to happen with it. Yeah. So, but. I mean, we have a lot of the, the future of public access, where the money's going to come from, is a little up in the air. It I is get the impression. I know. I remember because everybody's uh, dropping. Chris cable. Collins was all over that when he was still here, and he was very concerned about. I, I remember the, the whole thing, the funding, and all of that. It was really a, a serious concern of his. So, um, love to sort all that out. We really and there's we can create a cable access. I think a committee to kind of talk about yeah. this stuff recently jonathan Soon. when you if you have any information where you need letters of support or you think that we can do something please let us know because i will do that you know what you do and how you tape our meetings is extremely important yeah and it's part of being open government and for us to have to pay someone oh, yeah. and do support this without the public access money is craziness. Well, pay somebody that would be a whole yeah. other position for yeah. you. Yeah, so. well, sure, for sure. Incredible. No, it's a great, so, great system right um, now. please keep us on top of that um, and let us know what we have to do. Yeah, okay. you hear rumors, let us know because mm -hmm. it's always better to get ahead of the curve on it. Mm -hmm. And we do have really responsive, again, Joe and Natalie are fabulous. They do try to come up with solutions. Absolutely. They do know that little towns can't afford to pay for any of this stuff. So um, if you hear rumors like there are things that we should be doing, just let us know and we'll get Joe and Natalie on it and we'll do whatever testifying do. or whatever yeah. and send letters, whatever. We'll make sure that it happens, okay? Okay. Thank you, John. Thank, Thank you. you. Have a good night. Take care. Okay, back so, to um I'm in favor of seven, but I don't know about you guys. I don't I guess I'm torn between six and seven. So what do you want to do, Tim? Um I think that uh I would like to um say that you know Seven has what do you what do you think about the difference between six and seven? Uh, I guess I hadn't put too much thought into how different they are from each other. I think they both have their benefits and drawbacks. Oh. Um, I think I overall would favor seven um, as mm -hmm. the as the most feasible option. But okay, um, all right. I think the issue with that one is potentially the the distance between the town administrator and the staff that work directly under her. So. Um, I'm not sure if that's something worth altering it over, but that that's that's really my only gripe with number seven. Mm -hmm. Well, um, I'd like to, you know, I'd like to just make this decision tonight if everyone else is 
got enough information to make it. I mean, there are pluses to six and pluses to seven, but um, I'm I'm willing to go with six. My concern is because um, you got two and two. I'm I'm I know, I'm concerned to have three to have three over there is. Well, you've got you've got one separate spot now that there's always you know an an entrance uh reception area right there and then those two rooms are you know that big room yeah but collaboratively but it's this just one a here this one is actually you can close the door well that's what i mean that way the town administrator okay. has their own separate room and then can meet out front as well well but i was thinking that door yeah but what i was thinking is the reason why that door is important is because then you could have Chris Dunn in the back and Chris in the front. If they're working on two different things, they got, you know, if you got two different meetings going or you got, you can close the door. We don't have a petition. I mean, all we have is a petition there. And if you're the town administrators over there, then they can just have a meeting at that table. There's, and the town administrator is there. And the door still can the be town closed. The would have that whole spot. Right. Yeah, or you know, the select board can still go in there and use the desk mm -hmm. if it's not being utilized for anything. But um, I think having the two, having the actual separation, rather than just an open space between the two. I'm, I'm good. I mean, Either way, I'm good. I mean, it really, I, I, let's I really six. want the staff to be like, well, are, that's, if you're I'm, good with this, because we're not here every day. We'll come right. in and go. I, I just whatever you think is best for. All of you. To well, I think well here's, a, here's here one thought. Um, the advantage that um, I guess the advantage that six has over seven in some sense is that each individual, the town administrator, the administrative assistant, the uh, assistant town administrator and the planning uh, person could all have a door closed mm -hmm. and work alone. For <laughs> If we did six. The yeah. reason why I'm pushing for six is because when my my husband is working at home more, uh, hopefully he will retire. But he's working at home, and then when we're when we're both on meetings at the same time, we have to close the door from the mudroom to the kitchen mm -hmm. because we're both too loud, and that's what I'm afraid of with Chris and Chris. Mm -hmm. If they have phone calls or meetings, you've got to have be able to close the door. And I would I would add on six that um, that. Chris should be able to visit that space and look at the two different rooms, measure yeah. them, figure out which one makes more sense for you because you have right. You're gonna have more responsibilities, you know. Um, but figure out what you think is best. Which sure. space you traveling want between first. the two as well. Yeah. yeah. Sure. So if I have any concerns with the arrangement, I can bring them up before the next meeting. Um, That'd be great. And, yeah, I'll keep in touch. I'd like this to be in. The reason why I want to make the decision tonight is because. You know, Chris is supposed, Christopher is supposed to be here on the fourth, right? Mm -hmm. So we need to have that done and Moved dusted. And done. Well, right. in normal circumstances, this is not normal circumstance, but normal circumstances, the week before Thanksgiving is quiet, and so for us, this would be the time to get the space ready to do the office switches and all that kind of stuff. So that's why mm -hmm. it's important to make the decision tonight. But we have so much stuff going on. I don't know if it can happen next week but i would hope that it can happen so so we have a space for him yes. computer set up the whole thing mm -hmm. it comes yeah so do we, we have a computer we should be able to i get. think we have a computer but we are going to need to get in touch with our it team to mm -hmm. uh get an office set up with a email. new workstation yeah, email bring the okay. all of the hardware that we have over there right now that i'm using over to the new place um yeah we wouldn't need to move the town administrator with number six, which is a plus. Right. Um, her yeah, workstation that's would stay. A big plus. Her workstation would stay exactly as it is, um, and she would just have a new person sharing the suite instead of me. It would be Pat. Right. Um, but other than that, there, uh, other than the 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 hardware installation um, right. and the rearranging of some furniture, I don't think there's a crazy amount that would have to change. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, whatever you think is best. That's so, can I make a proposal that we uh, make a motion that we approve the proposal number six for the rearrangement of the office, uh, with the addendum that uh, Chris Nolan will 
let us know whether he would prefer the front or the back yeah, office. Sure. Um, in the current yeah. nurses space. Right. And yep. there were, I mean, we're still flexible. The idea is we're just right. voting. Just move it move, along. Yeah. Move right. it along. Yep. Yeah, Who's definitely second? flexible. I'll second. Okay. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Tim Hill G. I. Trevor McDaniel, I. Carolyn Ness, I. Chris, thank you for arranging all this. Sure. Um, I appreciate that. Yeah. Um, and that's wonderful so that we can get moving on that. Was this building inspector thing, was that something that well, was just on hold? It's on hold. We're trying to still get someone to do coverage. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I thought it was for. Okay. Okay. Um, assistant town administrator uh, position reclassification. Um, Chris has been doing yeoman's work and stepping up to the plate. So we wanted to reclassify. And I just want to make sure that that's, we wrote that. Um, well, but we haven't really decided. Right. Um, I know, Tim, you had made some suggestion. Yeah, I mean, what I'm thinking, and, and Trevor, I don't know if, uh, you know, let's have a little round table here, but, um, and I've been so pleased with all of the the hard work that Chris has been putting into his doing his job and under sometimes difficult, you know, we've had some issues with the uh, staffing and health and, mm -hmm. and uh, that have impacted and, and, uh, you know, he's just been taking on things, getting things done, moving things forward. And, um, you know, and he's taking graduate classes, et cetera. I, I just uh, think that from a standpoint of keeping him here is, is my goal. And I think, mm -hmm. um, I was thinking in the category categories of asking the personnel department to reclassify him, move him up in to like F6 or F7, which is currently he's been, his work's been recognized on a temporary basis. And I think we need to make it permanent. Mm -hmm. So it's just a question of, uh, he properly belongs in the F category, I believe, um, but he's been I checked with him and he's been paid at this at the G2 rate. Is that what you said? As a temporary. Yeah, as a temporary thing. Right. And so I think perhaps if we want to make this permanent, we move them back into the F category at mm -hmm. um we just recently asked the personnel department to um make the planner F6 um because it was originally classified as F1, I yeah. think. And it seems appropriate to me that Chris should be at or above slightly above that. Um, you know, and I think there's a, a 50 cent hourly difference between F6 and F7. So that's what I was thinking. But so I would I would support that, too. I would support, like, I guess, moving forward with a personnel committee to bring that request to them and then kind of checking in with Brenda and looking at what what um, what does the budget look like? Do Can we support that? Like, wh where are we at fund wise? Right. Or are we going to run out the end of the year and ask for a transfer? Kind of just how monetarily that affects mm -hmm. us. And then. Yep. Well, I, I, I did have when I first started thinking about this um, in anticipation that we might yeah. need to think about this. <laughs> she mentioned that because we were we were delayed in hiring a planner. This yeah. year is fine. It's it's really budgeting for the next budget right. cycle. What is the impact of, yeah. of a ten thousand dollar? That's what I price just want to see. Yeah. So um, she said, they definitely, there's no problem this year, and Correct. we're already sort of doing that this year. Right. But next year, um, you know, uh, if the G two goes away and Chris is now back, you know, that doesn't make any sense to me. I understand. Um, yeah. And so. It's it's a budgetary decision to try and retain really highly yeah. qualified and, and yep. you know motivated Productive people. people. No, I, I was agree. just going to say I'm always I'm always yeah. in favor of that support so, um, for sure. What I think we should do is make a motion to um, that we move that there forward. is consensus. Yes, and that we need to move forward on this and and yeah, and move forward with the personnel board and. Yeah, to make sure it's scaled yeah. out correctly and look look at yeah. all that. So I'll yeah. so make that motion. Okay, I'll second the motion. Is there any any more further discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor? Tim Hill, GI. I. Trevor McDaniel, I. Carolyn S. I. Thank now, in, in terms of how we actually do this, rather than having the assistant town administrator writing to the personnel board asking for a pay raise, um, do you want to do that, Carolyn? Do you want to ask? Sure. For, Sure, uh, it will be my request. 
Yeah, just that will be fine. If we could get it to them, or I could do it too. Um, if we could get it to them by the end of the week um, in email, ask then we could maybe do a joint meeting like we did before, right? And just you know, exactly. they're in, they, they've had a chance to look at yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, I'm with you. Okay, and maybe check in with Brenda and see. Okay, what what does next year look like? What's that yeah. going to do for our budgeting? Well, like, like Tim said, this... coming up, we need to be on budgeting. Like uh, we're uh, yeah. behind the eight ball on that already this year. Mm -hmm. Like Tim said, though. What Brenda said, this year's not an issue. I, I get that. No, it's next year. Yeah, that's next year. really what Budgeting for next year. And then, um, and then we really yeah. need to get those budgets out. And I know Brenda's working on getting all that together, but I we're behind the eight ball again. Yeah, thought, yeah. And, uh, you know, one thing I'd like to do is figure out a better channel for talking to the assessors about things. Because I feel I like I know nothing yep. about... Like for instance, Newpro, they're two years into this project. Yep. What are they paying in taxes now? Yep. They're they're moving down the chart on the TIF. Correct. When are they going to get to the fifty percent rate? Right. You know, um, what is that going to do to impact the budget? And Correct. These are all things that um, love to and have. That. Sunny days, uh, you know, moves forward. Yeah. Um, you know, they don't have a TIF, so when will they come online? Mm -hmm. um, and. Um, also, yeah, other questions that we sh we should have a meeting with the assessors. Yeah, you know, like quarterly or something. I agree. Love to have that. Well, it would be nice to talk about new growth because yeah. you know where that's we're at, what we're doing. Yeah, where where um, can we get it next year? I know yeah. because it, it, people need to understand new growth is not that big. Uh, my, no. uh, impact on our budget. You can get. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, our our most recent new growth was uh, the Sugarloaf Estates. Yeah. You know, yeah. yep, that's exactly, and that's a few years old. And tree houses, uh, tree you know, house. meals taxed. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Well, I mean, that does have impact. Um, okay, Chris, how about your uh, um, assistant town administrator's report? What we haven't hit, maybe. Sure. First of all, I just want to say thank you all for your support. I really appreciate it. It's Welcome. very noticed. Um, so diving right into the ATA report for the week, uh, Schedule Z, that is something I've been working on. Um, I learned what a Schedule Z was about a year <laughs> ago when I stepped into this role, and now it is something I love to look at every fall. Yeah. So um, I've been working with Diane Cornwell of the DPW. She's an absolute rock star She's and has awesome. been looking and doing some really critical analysis of our DPW and other bills specifically to Eversource for electricity mm -hmm. um, and how those fit onto our uh, net metering schedule from the allocations that we get from the solar project up at 901 River Road. Um, we are one of several communities that has allocations designated from that, but we are the host since it's located here in our town. And that means we have the unique privilege of reallocating. Um, we can make the specific requests on a maximum of every six months. Um, so I did it last fall and I did it again just last week. Um, so I think moving forward every fall, I'm going to kind of rehash this. And essentially what I do, I reach out to representatives from all of the communities that are represented on this schedule, um, tell them to send any changes my way within the next 15 days and whatever changes are requested, they go forward. Can you um, help me with, with what a schedule Z is too? Like, sure. so we, there's, there's money that gets um, like credited because of the solar that gets produced there. Right. And then you have the ability to apply those credits to certain buildings. Is that the idea or certain usage? Or Correct. So it's a rate that we pay every month um, and the other communities also pay. And that gives us certain allocations that we can use against our um Like the sewer that really uses a ton of electricity. Right. We can offset that. With so that. I think our biggest allocation at the moment goes to the South Deerfield wastewater plant, which right. makes sense because it is a very high electrical user. Yep. yep. Um, so okay. us and one other community were the only ones that needed changes this year. Um, yep. But we're, we're always trying to tweak it where we can, yeah. because sometimes credits will really start to accumulate on one yep. to the point where it's not really useful right. to have that much in credits. Sure. And meanwhile, others are going to be racking up big bills that you could bring down more right. by allocating more. That's so great. that was a huge success. And I was notified on Monday of this week that the new allocations are in effect for the current billing cycle that started yesterday. And while we're talking about that, I would love to find out at some point in a future meeting how we're coming along on the on the 
the transfer station one. Wouldn't it be nice to get something on there and credits from that? That would be good to hear. I am not. I don't know where we're at. Sure, where that stands. Where, uh, I know that uh, Beth Greenblatt was doing a lot of that work, and then mm -hmm. I know Casey and everybody's been been on that. But just curious where it's at. Just a, you know, all three minutes. Of, it's a hookup with. Everson. Find out. Yeah, I know Everson, but they they said they were going to get moving on it, right? right? I mean, I think find out. You know, maybe that's uh, find out how how we redistribute some of these responsibilities. Yeah, with when the planner comes on, you know that's a planning function sure. too. Exactly. So you can yep. chase it down. Yeah, it's awesome. Oh my gosh, be great. I, I don't know how many years you've, you've been, been working late. on that a long time. <laughs> no, but it's getting there. I feel like, last the time they were like approved, it's, it's like now. the transfer station where the sun doesn't shine. Yeah. Right. Oh, oh my <laughs> that's god. True. It is Sorry. so bad. No, <laughs> it's just. It's just so frustrating because this has been like decades. Yeah. We, oh my God. Yeah. All right. All right. Yep. Cybersecurity. So cybersecurity. Um, so something that I've noticed since I started working here is that we could do a lot better with our cybersecurity practices. Yeah. And that's something that I am passionate about kind of driving home. So I'm in the process of pursuing a grant for town employees to receive cybersecurity training through the state's municipal cybersecurity awareness grant program. Great. Uh, that's something that was used in the last town where I worked and it was very successful. Excellent. We got a success rate of, I think, 70 to 75% of employees that actually did the training, which sometimes it's like hurting cats, getting people yeah. to do these things. Um, so that's pretty good. Good. Um, it is a completely free program if we were awarded the grant and they haven't it, it's basically guaranteed for as long as they have licenses to give out so all i need to do is finish this application process which i'm working on with help from our it team at entree because some of the questions are way above my pay grade in terms of technicality um yeah. however uh that is going to be coming to fruition in the next few months and if awarded the training would start in january and okay. go through the duration of the 2024 calendar year sounds great good. Sounds good. Um, Leary Lot, I think I already gave yep, a full update, did. but I'm trying to see if there's anything I missed. Um, nope. I think you covered it all. Excellent. The charging stations you did. So the town hall EV charging, um, that's the other part of the work that Rivermore has been helping us with, in addition to the work down at the Leary Lot. Um, that one is expected to start sooner because there's less moving parts. Um, yeah. And that space just on the west side of the building mm -hmm. um, is really conducive to having two level two EV charging stations put there, both for public and for employee use. Um, Universal Electric and Eversource are the two contractors, well, Eversource being the utility and Universal Electric being the electrical contractor that we're using. Um, they're in coordination with each other. Uh, right now, the ball isn't much in our court on that particular game, but uh, we're being involved as needed. And um, will 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 there be a different rate there than there is in the, in the current charging? Is this still charge point? Uh, it will be charge point, and I really hope that we have the opportunity to set the rate fresh so that we can choose something reasonable. Yeah, um, um, and I and I imagine we will. Did we? We haven't heard anything from that seven hundred seventy thousand dollar grant for the Leary lot yet, have we? For the we level have, three, we have not. And I actually I was in touch with Kobe in uh, Congressman McGovern's office earlier today about that, um, and he said they're. They're very cagey about when they release their decisions. Because right. I asked, have you gotten any ticklers? Have you do you have any idea when the Federal Highway Administration might be releasing these? And he said he really can't speak no, to it. Or that's fine. Yeah, yeah. Okay. which it's fine. I was I was glad to hear back from him and yeah. get that. Well, I didn't know if it was. Thanks for reaching I, out. But, I, yeah. I didn't know if it was tied in with the government shutdown that might yeah. happen by Saturday. I don't know. Seems like I think we averted happen. that somehow. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. Gonna, they're going to pass something and get going for um, another month. Yeah. <laughs> Guess our federal government's running one month at a time now. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, the, 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 the really uh, rabid right wingers that uh, <laughs> sabotaged McCarthy. Then now they're now they're upset because the Democrats voted to keep the government funded. Yeah. And so then um, they they decided to trash another bill so yeah they're, they're still unwilling to figure out how to work together oh yeah <laughs> well they're elbowing each other uh, <laughs> yeah <laughs> anyway but essentially that's going to start in the next few weeks we're hoping um so in Great. terms of some hr functions uh this week i've sent a substantial amount of time uh looking at resumes and candidates for a couple of our open positions including the program coordinator over at the south county senior center mm -hmm. uh I worked with Jen Remillard today. Um, we're going to be setting up interviews next week. 
for right. our top right. candidates um, and health agent, which the board was uh, yes. nice enough to appoint Valerie Bird earlier. Um, and I'm happy to have that conversation with her later this week about um, the further steps of the hiring process. We also need to get well, you were, you were just going to do well. one piece yes. the job offer. Yes. And then um, also from the town clerk. When you get yeah, <laughs> that was on the I put that on the agenda. I had Chris put that in the agenda for the 29th. Perfect. Great. Okay. That's great. Okay. Because yep. I we've been yep. not moving on that. No, either. we need to get it done. Okay. Yep. Um, and then the, I think I finally touched, I, I already touched on my last point, which was the environmental yeah. justice research I've been yeah. doing. Um, and that's essentially all I have for you right now. Great. Chris, thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate you um, really working hard this week too, um, covering two things, two spots. Um, the only other thing, um, items unanticipated, um, I was going to have the Human Rights Committee look at our calendar for 2024 just so you know block out I don't any think we have a committee well unfortunately it's a bit of a skeleton right now is yeah, the impression i've gotten is there just someone to review sure this this will be almost the whole year has gone by and i mean i think this is kind of basic thing that yep when should we not have any meetings mm -hmm. in 2024 to be more aware of people's yep religious holidays and sure. whatever and sure. so I'm, I'm just gonna a note to the whoever if we can get that sorted out if that's okay with you guys it's fine with me. um so i want to just get more organized go so go ahead sure um i was just gonna say just to give an update on where exactly things stand with the human rights advisory committee um so the board previously appointed four people um and one of them had voluntarily stepped down. Another had expressed hesitation in moving forward with the format that it has to operate in as a public, public body. body. Yep. Um, so we are currently at three members um, and only one of them has been responsive to emails that I've sent over the last few months. So I don't know where the latter two stand. Um, I, I don't know. I, I could try to keep getting in contact with them, but as things currently stand, until there are new members appointed, and with the current with the current membership capped at five, um, if the board found two new people that they wanted to appoint, that could constitute a quorum. Right. Meeting with the one person who's remained on board. Um, so it's okay. it's up to you all, but I'm I'm not sure what the best course for proceeding on that would be. Yeah, it sounds like what we need to do is try and um, re-engage the community in, in, in saying, you know, I know that some of the people who helped us set up the original thing were potentially interested in moving forward and participating, but nobody has come forward. So maybe we need to find a way to, you know, say, hey, anybody interested in serving on a committee like this that advises the town on you know mm -hmm. i just think it's important that we just have some awareness and that's i you know just want to ask a request the next thing that happens you know it's going to be I, i'm just sorry i'll leave it there no nope. i'm not going to say it okay i just really hope that people step forward and want to serve the town in this capacity well we're, we're lucky that some of the issues people have moved out of town so mm. that is going to help too um all right uh we have the regular meetings coming up the only thing i really wanted us to do was just and we can think about it no big deal we usually try to do that in january down in boston when we're at the mma budget. but we're so busy we got we want to start the budget season but i also want to organize our goals yeah. We got overwhelmed this year with just, you know, right. like I said, I feel like the year has gone by so fast because there's just been so much stuff going on. But um uh, you know, the obviously the roads and mm -hmm. everything has taken over our life, but we really need to focus again on some goals. And, and we we have a really good concise. Yes. We have we need like four town business and projects. I just so maybe in the next over the between now and the holidays mm -hmm. because 
hopefully it would generally slow down a little. Um, we could talk about some of this because yep. um, I feel like it's really important that we stay focused. We yes. try to be accomplished. What we, I mean, what can we accomplish instead of just being reactionary? Right. Obviously, we had a crisis this summer yep. with the roads. For sure. There's no question. Everybody's still, I mean, we have roads that are one lane, like Cox so Road, <laughs> roads that were closed, um, yeah. you know, and we have River Road that we haven't even figured out how to tackle yet. Um, and we're starting the grant process for some of these roads. Uh, but, you know, this is definitely reactionary. So what can we do positively, um, proactively? I mean, I feel like Leary Lot is definitely proactive. We got to keep on that and get that going. Yep. I mean, if we um, get out to bid, really bid and we have a, we have a, you know, a little bit of nice, you know, if the weather is mild, if we get rain instead of snow, maybe we can do something with, you know, start on the Leary Lot and the common and the common. Together. Yeah, it's any work that we can do at the common. Um, you know, but there are some factors like. We need to work with Mass DOT mm -hmm. on the dry bridge, the yep. common, yep. you know, the railroad trestles on Pine Nook. Yeah. I mean, we got to yeah, maybe have another meeting with them. Mm -hmm. uh, yep. Tim, I don't know what, if you have anything off the top of your head, but we, we need to, we need to be a little bit organized and make sure we accomplish some stuff. And that we have our new planner has mm -hmm. set goals and, and and, and we want to have feels like he's contributing and we're moving right. forward. Right, and we that. have a little bit. I mean, obviously, he's going to step up. We have tons of grants that we're constantly yep. working on, so that's not going to be an issue. But what do we want him to focus in on? Yeah, and you know that kind of stuff. Yep. Okay. okay. Sounds good. Uh, before we go, I do have one question. Um, sure. So regarding our bond situation and the um, the legislation we're trying to get signed. yes thank yes. you um so we are going to need to have a meeting at some point after the meeting on the 29th um because okay. i think there's paperwork that won't be ready until the 30th and this is a little bit of a narrow time frame but it's going to have to be sometime between the 30th of november and the 4th of december um does anybody have any thoughts on how that might look would would you all be available can, for a I meeting meet anytime okay. yeah we can we can anytime. just to call us when we need would you be available for a meeting on the fourth potentially that monday uh let's see yeah um yep i can uh in, in, in the afternoon i would but um okay i have a mapco meeting at five o'clock but i um could um i could do um six Okay, I think six would be fine. What would have been? Uh, yeah, I could do it. On, I would prefer to do it on the thirtieth. So, but oh, the thirtieth. Yeah, yeah, I mean, would we be ready on the thirtieth? I think the thirtieth would be fine. We have the special election the next day on the fifth. Right. Mm -hmm. um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. True, and we're gonna have to be set up for that. That's a good point. Right. Um. So the thirtieth might be better if that works for all of you. Yeah. Um, I have a six o'clock. The conservation commission is supposed to be meeting for with for senior housing okay uh, delineations so if we could work around this concon meeting yeah would five be too late no uh, five, I mean, if it's five. a short meeting yeah. it would yeah, give yeah, you some time five o'clock is fine okay so and i'll pencil that in for five yeah. o'clock on the 30th of november and if you all want to make sure that's in your calendars now yeah. um we can... it would be ready for the 29th um that's my understanding and i'll let you all know if that changes but that was okay. through communication i had with sarah and with our okay. financial advisor okay so they'll actions that occur on the 29th can't be dealt with until the next day right yeah and then we can sign yes that's my understanding okay that's how it was presented to me all right well yeah no we can do i'm open whatever we have to do okay chris Yep, whatever you need. Thank you. So, yeah. We had a good meeting tonight. Yes. Uh, thank yeah. you, Carol. Yeah, thank you. No, you did. You're efficient. Yeah. Very good. I'm trying to get us. <laughs> I um, not heard the word mosquito. Oh, you did mention it. They're dead. Yes, yes. they're That's dead. Right. That's oh, you want no dragonflies. <laughs> no dragonflies. <laughs> <laughs> they're dead. Mosquitoes are dead. I'll, okay. I make I'll a motion to adjourn. I'll second the motion. All those in favor. Tim Hilchi, aye. 
Trevor McDaniel, I. Carolyn Nessa. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Yes. Enjoy your time with your families.